We're at the CCA workbench for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques for Grouper this week, yes, Dave. Sir. So let's see what kind of rigs and techniques we can come up with. Well, you know, it's one of the most highly sought after fish in Florida. He's, oh, yeah. He's really good to eat. Everybody, you know, he fights really hard, but that's not oh, yeah. why we catch him. We, we, we want to we eat want, him. Yeah, we want to take you him know, home. We're catching him to eat him because, they, you know, they have big... Uh, they're big fish. They get to be pretty good size. They have a lot of meat on them for their size. You know, yeah. a lot of head, but the head makes a good thing to eat too, which a lot of people don't know. But you know, if you if you you know that big white flaky flesh does a lot of great things. Well, you know, oh, you can yeah. bake it, you can fry it, you can put it in a chowder. It holds it together. It's just a, a great fish to eat. And there's really four of the ma four main species that we're targeting. I mean, there's a lot of different grouper species that we can catch in Florida. Right. Some really obscure ones that we have on our walls around here. But the red. The black, the gag, and the scamp are probably the four ones that we're trying to catch most of the time. And, uh, you know, they range in, you know, you can keep one up to a red to 20 inches tail length, a black to 24 minimum, a gag is a 24 inch minimum, and a scamp is 16 inch minimum. He, he doesn't get as big, but boy, he's... He's probably my favorite Ooh, one to eat. That's the tastiest of the, the scamp, bunch, that's The big sure. liar tail, yeah. you'll notice when you catch the scamp. Yep. Um, and you can't catch more than four of any of those in a day. Uh, you, you have an aggregate, you know, per person, you, yeah. you, only four per day. And, and some of them you can keep two and some of them you can keep all four, but you can't keep more than four grouper species per person per, per day. Per person, yeah. You know, um, uh, no matter what species it is, you know, you're, they're usually found on the bottom in deeper water, but... Um, and they love structure. I they're mean, usually stru around a, a wreck it's, it's or a, a reef, something a hard. ledge, yeah. hard bottom. Hard bottom. You gotta have hard bottom. If you're not, if you're not on hard bottom and you're not on the spot, you're probably not going to catch them. You got to be on there. Yeah. And in the Gulf Coast, you know, as you were mentioning before, in the winter time, they come in shallow. They, oh yeah. You know, all, all grouper species do, even on our side, but they don't come in as, as shallow as they do on the on the west coast, uh, on the Gulf side, because it gets really shallow. Well, quick. I, I'm like over you. There. I'm an East Coast guy. You know, right. in Central Florida. Grew up there. So I went over to the Ozello area and, right. and did that shallow water grouper fishing. And I am telling you right now, that was absolutely exhilarating because you've got the same size fish that we catch out in 200 feet of water and you're catching them in sometimes five and six feet of water right. and you're throwing lures at them sometimes and they're hitting lures. It's it's a, it's, that's a heck of a it's, bite it's when you like, get a bite like, on a lure It's like you crossed a, a bass and a snook right. and, or a, and a bass and an amberjack. When they hit, it's, oh, it's game changer. It's right. that shallow water group of fisheries. And, really and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of springs and, and uh, little ledges and, and holes yes. in that limestone bottom that stretches a long way out in the Gulf. So there's a lot of opportunity to do well, that. Well, what do we want to use for them, Dave? Well, usually if you're bottom fishing, you know, you're going to be using uh, a four-aught like that, you know, something with some strength. You know, a six-foot or six-and-a-half-foot rod is what I would use. We used to use nine-foot rods till we figured out that that puts a lot of pressure on the angler yeah. instead of uh, on the fish. If you use a shorter rod, you have a shorter fulcrum, you can put more pressure on the fish and get them coming up to you. Which when you're bottom fishing, that's the that's the main thing you wanna do. When you hook a, hook a fish down on the, a grouper, you wanna get him coming to you. Because if he can turn his head and get back down into the wreck, you're done. Yeah. It doesn't matter what leader you're using. It's the you're first 20 feet. Yes. You have to beat them that 20 feet. If yeah. you don't beat them that 20 feet, they've got you. It's wind, done. wind, wind, yeah. and then keep winding. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell yeah. people. And the drag's going to go at some right. point. I mean, you hammer it down, it's going to go at some point, right. but you just keep winding and hope that he doesn't get you back right. in Right. Don't take a break until you yeah. know you've got him at least 50 feet up off the bottom, is what I always say. Just keep cranking, 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 you know. And it's a good idea to use chum, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a, chum, a chum cage on the bottom works way better than a chum block hanging off the side of your boat as well. If you can get one of Ray Rocher's chum cages, put a big weight in there, fill that thing up and drop it all the way to the get bottom on a line, yeah. it, it fires things up way faster and you get to know what's down there way quicker. Gotcha. Now, my favorite thing to do is to catch a live bait where I'm fishing it. Okay, you so, know, so, so an R&R &R sabiki. Right, if I'm fishing on a ledge, I'm trying to catch a live bait from that ledge. And if I pull up a, a nice, you know, vermilion, a little small vermilion snapper or, or something, grunt. or a grunt or a yeah. big pinfish, anything that's on that reef, any of those fish that are piled up down there, and I drop them back down on a knocker rig like this with an eight odd eagle claw, circle C, and an eight ounce weight uh, and, a, and a live bait and let the grouper eat it. Let him eat it just for a second. It'll run, as soon as you see it running off, 
lock it up and start winding and wind, 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 and get them coming to you. You want to use like a 50 pound braid on your main line. If you're going to be fishing on the bottom, you always want to use braid because you can feel everything. Yeah. And uh, between an 80 to 100, or sometimes a 200 pound leader, depending on where you are fishing and what kind of groupers you're fishing for. Sometimes if I'm up off, you know, out here out of, you know, 250 feet of water fishing some of those cones, I'll get bigger leader because I can expect to catch a 40 or 50 pound grouper sometimes some, yeah. and 250 feet of water, you're going to need some good leader because he's probably going to get you back down in there uh, before you can get him out. So yeah. hopefully we'll let him get in there a little bit and then pull him out. So I'll use like 200 pound. I got one here. Some, some big up. stuff. Huh? Yeah, I got like one that. rigged up here with 200 pound oh, yeah. and a big hook. So, you know, you're going to be able to jerk him out of there, hopefully get him out of there, even even if he gets his head down. But you know, sometimes you don't. And, and, and that's another thing, you know, you got to figure you're going to lose some stuff. You're, you're going to lose one <laughs> you're or two, lose some that's stuff. for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, Might lose some stuff for sure. There's a whole lot more, yeah. that, there's a whole lot more that we could talk about, but there we got to go. So where are we going next, Bree? All right.